<laughs> you do the same thing? Yeah. I talk I to you? It. No. <laughs> let, me, let me open the meeting. You have 32 seconds. We're on. You're on. All righty. Today is May 8, 2018, and... Uh, we're going to go cover the agenda for um, the BOCC first, but um, before we get into it, uh, Romero yeah. has a statement to make, and yeah. then we'll go proceed. Good morning. Uh, thank you. Just for the, um, to the benefit of the public, the agenda setting started this morning at 9 in the morning, and we had three executive sessions that we started at 9. The first one was related to a letter from the Board of Equalization. The second executive session was um, a request related to the Lake St. Clair. And the third executive session was uh, related to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service letter that we received uh, back in April 20, 2018. Those executive sessions ended um, just about five minutes ago, and now we're going to be convening to the regular uh, agenda setting as we have it on the um, posted agenda. All right. Thank you very much. So we'll start off today by asking Commissioner Hutchins and not Commissioner Edwards to do the Pledge of Allegiance. And then we'll move to see if they approve the agenda for today, May 8th, if there's no revisions. <clears throat> and then we'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes for May 1st, 2018, if there are no amendments to that. With that in mind, we have uh, uh, two presentations. And the first one is the Bicycle Commuter Month Proclamation. And I think is... Um, yeah, and we have two uh, very uh, bicyclist advocates, mm -hmm. and one is Duncan Green, and the other one is Chris Hawkins, your own Chris Hawkins. Mm -hmm. They both will be coming this afternoon, and they will be uh, receiving the proclamation. And is the other gentleman coming? Um, uh, what's his name, Duncan? Duncan mm -hmm. Green, yeah. Is Duncan coming? Good, sure. So do we have two copies of it? Just a we'll, ha we'll have two copies. Yeah, yeah. Right for two photos. Is Commissioner Edwards out for the day now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's got speed athletes. All righty. <clears throat> so then we have another uh, presentation from the Community Planning and Economic Development Department. It's the Thurston Climate Ad Adaptation of Plan Award, and this is super exciting. And it was Allison Osterberg, huh? Yeah, this is, this is a, an award the Thurston Regional Planning Council, TRPC, received um, a national award uh, related to the Thurston Climate Adaptation Plan where um, the county is participating on this effort uh, um, along with the major cities in the county. So uh, Ellison um, will introduce this, the, the award and hopefully have uh, an opportunity to interact with TRPC staff as to what that really means. Mm -hmm. yeah, schedule to attend both uh, Mike Burnham, the person who worked on the you, plan. You need to come and speak. <laughs> yes, from TRPC, uh, Mike Burnham, the author, the collaborator, coordinator of the plan, will be here in attendance, as well as Mark Daly, the executive director of TRPC. Okay. And is there an actual disc or placard or something that is um, presented, that was presented to Allison for on behalf of? Yes, I believe that an award was presented to TRPC at the American Association of Planners Conference in uh, New Orleans last month. Do we have a? I think they'll be bringing that award. Okay, bring it. That's what I want. Yeah. Sure. I want to see it. I want to put it there. I'm going to just leave it on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're hot, you're cold, that's good. <laughs> okay, sure. Okay, any questions about the two presentations so far from anybody? Press release, all that kind of stuff? I don't know. We'll talk about PIO in a minute. Okay. Uh, how about the next item is the opportunity for the public to address the board? Is there I have uh, nothing, um, at least to my knowledge, that you may have some public testimony be coming in. Would you, you like to say something? Oh, I was just going to remind you. Well, go ahead. Oh. Hello, how are you? Good morning, this is La Bonita Bomar, the clerk of the board, and I'm introducing Lisa Johnson. She's no going to be uh, our... During presentation moment? Mm -hmm. 
Pardon me? During presentation moment? No, oh, it's okay. not. We just thought it would be nice for her to come oh, in and sure. be introduced to the board and staff and uh, welcome her officially to the family and mm -hmm. the front office and the commissioner's you office. You bet. Yeah, yeah. And today's day one. Day one. <laughs> and she knows everything already. And <laughs> right. Okay. But she'll be filling in for Whitney. Okay, yeah, sure. And for the rest of the spring and summer and Robin and Whitney are training her throughout her stay as long as uh, Whitney's still here. Yeah, and yeah. And Robin, of course, will be taking the lead on training. Okay, sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. How does he tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, what would you like to know? <laughs> Where you're from, some of your interests, um, um, why Thurston County, and mm -hmm. all that kind of good stuff. Okay. Yeah? Um, I'm originally from here. I've mm -hmm. lived here my whole entire life. Um, I've worked hey, for Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Hang on. Excuse go me. Right there, there. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, now. Um, I've worked for public services ever since I graduated from college, so I feel like this is just the right fit. Um, in the past year, I was home with my baby, so this is the first position I've taken back since maternity leave. Okay, and um, serving in the public is something I've been passionate about all the time, so um, yeah. that's something that's probably the reason why I chose Thurston County. Sure. Um, my, I'm currently working on my master's degree, so okay, part of that has to do with um, public administration. So. Oh, MPA? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. So yeah. Um, mm -hmm. this just suits well with my degree and getting my work field experience even more enhanced with the county. So that's part of the reason why I have to go on the job. Well, I absolutely welcome my board, yeah. and we look forward to working with you, and we'll have a lot of fun, lots of laughs, <laughs> and um, um, just hang on. Here we go. Yeah. Yep. Thank you so much. Yeah. Welcome aboard. Yeah. Well, today's your first day, but when do you when do you begin flying solo? Is that up in the air, or That's does Whitney have an end date? I think it's up in the air whenever Well, we... whenever Whitney <laughs> is ready. So we're going yeah. right up to the end? Yeah. Okay. Does the baby get to decide? Just... The baby is the deciding factor, yeah. <laughs> the, decide, yeah. The, the baby is the decider. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Great. Well, welcome. Welcome to the welcome. county. Thank you so much for the opportunity. You bet. Bye, Lisa. Okay, I'm going to move on to number nope. two. Let's go back to number one, opportunity to address the public, okay. if you don't mind. Sure. Do we expect any comment from the uh, interim process decision last one, marijuana? Marijuana. You already took connection last week. Right, last week. So I didn't know if there would be any feedback uh, coming in public comment. Uh, and have we received any uh, feedback from the erroneous headline uh, in the newspaper, our newspaper record, uh, talking about the Thurston County corrections in violation of state purchasing rules and budget inflation? That it's not a Thurston County corrections, but it's the Department of Corrections, a state correction facility that is in or located in Thurston County. Any emails or comments or concerns? Uh, we have from not any? received anything related to the news release or the um, the article in the newspaper. No. The unfortunate headline. Okay. Thank nope. you. All righty. So that does bring us the county manager's update. Is there anything you have? Um, yes, I will be presenting to um, the Polar Works Department the 2017 Certificate of Good Practice issued by the County Road Administration Board. And um, as you may know, there has been a little bit of a history behind uh, this certificate. So mm -hmm. we just received the official notice and I will pre be presenting this afternoon to um, the department. All righty. So that takes us into consent items A through I. And the first one is the sheriff, a resolution establishing positions. <coughs> is this mm, mm, Hay Association? Yeah. This is not sergeants, is it? You, y yes, you um, already reviewed this item last week, but you have um, the, um, the the sheriff and the under sheriff, John Nas and Tim Braniff, where they presented to you how they are planning to um, create two new sergeant positions. The creation of those two new sar sergeant positions are not in addition to, um, but uh, from the um, process point of view, we need to create those positions. They will promote two road deputies to those two sergeant positions, and the vacancies created by those two road deputies will be eliminated. So this is not a creation of two new positions, this is just a promotion. 
You heard from uh, the sheriff's office as to the need and intent of having those two sergeants be part of the, their plan. The impact to the budget is uh, $26,000 in 2018, and they're planning to cover that on the current budget allocation of the sheriff's office. However, 2019 and on, that will be an additional request and additional funding to the sheriff's office to cover the impact of this promotion. Any questions, comments? No. no. Nope. Good here. Okay, moving on to B, 3B, which is a resolution re uh, for public work, works. Yep. You also have re uh, reviewed this um, um, proposal, and this is from the Department of Public Works. They currently have a vacant position, that is the Education and Outreach Specialist 1, and they have gone through an assessment, and they're requesting the board to reclassify this position to an assistant planner which is better aligned to the business of the solid waste division in, Thursday, in um, public works. Um, this uh, position will be the main contact for the uh, SWAC, that's the Solid Waste Advisory Committee, and the impact to the budget is zero. Both positions maxed out at $5,908 uh, a month, so no impact to the budget, it's just changing the, um, the job descriptions. Okay, question? Nothing. Okay, nope. 3C. 3C, um, this is a continuing effort by the uh, Director of Community Planning and Economic Development, CPAD, to start aligning all the different positions to uh, respond to the uh, increasing needs of the department. In this particular request, is reclassified a vacant position of Administrative Assistant 1 to Administrative Assistant 2. Uh, the impact will go from $4,860 to $5,359. That will be a $499 a month increase or 10 percent and they're planning to cover within the current allocation of their budget with no additional requests comments question nope okay 3d 3d this is uh, for your consideration to um, uh, approve a final plan for maxdale hill um prrd <coughs> this is a uh, an 80 acre development which they have a 16 a cluster residential lots with two resource parcels that equates to just about 62 acres in total. Um, all um, the, um, this plot has met all the requirements in the county and this is for your final consideration of approval. Any questions, comments? Yeah, I'm just okay. finished reading sure, this sure, again. Sure. Not a problem. <clears throat> Could you discussed this last week? Yeah. And I wasn't here for that discussion. And well, I was here for that discussion. I remember now. Yep, I'm done. You got it. <clears throat> All righty. And I think we're at 3E. Yeah, this is a request from the pretrial services um, department. And this is uh, to get into a contract with Ottoman C pretrial. Um, for a case management system. Let me take you back maybe a, a couple of months where you had the prosecutor's uh, office as well as the Office of Public Defense. And they give you a brief as to how they are gonna be looking for a case management system, which that is, that is a good thing to look at the prosecutors as well as the Office of Public Defense, a single case management system they can talk to each other. And also, as part of the discussion was to have the pretrial services needs be met by this system, however, uh, the, the, the system, the case management system, the prosecutors where the Office of Public Defense are looking to purchase is going to be probably a year or year and a half from now and the pretrial services uh, are in need to purchase and meet their needs uh, even as we speak. The intent of this uh, uh, Ottoman is that eventually this application will talk to the uh, system that will be purchased eventually by the um, prosecutors, attorneys, as well as the Office of Public Defense. Uh, where they received five vendors, five bids, and, um, and the uh, cost of this particular purchase is $30,500, is included already on the pretrial services budget, and no additional request on the budget is, requ is required. Oh, good. Okay. So. Uh, 3F. Uh, this is a new item. You did not review this item. It was added uh, last week. 
and this is a, uh, an interlocal agreement um, for involuntary commitment judicial services between the Thurston County, the Office of Public Defense, and the Thurston Mason Behavioral Health Organization. This is a, a, a yearly uh, agreement for reimbursement for those services. Right now, the agreement tops at $150,000, and again, that will be on a reimbursement basis. Um, if you have any questions, the Director of Office, Office of Public Defense is here to answer those questions. Um, no. I'm just looking for the... Uh, I was looking for the document, too. Looking for the document, yeah. But my, my it should be a touch in there. It's not. No. You got you have the document? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm PD to the rescue. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, it, it pulls on my on my computer. I apologize. Oh, see it. Huh? You have it? You scroll all the way down. Yeah, scrolling in progress here. Scrolling in progress. You're on the Board of Health. Hey, see, told you. Hang on. There we go. Awesome. Is this it? Yep. That's Maybe the actual hard copy. Okay. that in your but mine's acting up I gotta refresh my whole thing to get to there but I don't think it's the system I think it's bad but Mary, will you do me a favor though and just kind of rephrase it again the way you did up front yes uh, this is a, uh, a yearly agreement with the Th uh, Thurston Mason Behavioral Health, Health Organization to provide involuntary commitment judicial services and those are provided by the Office of Public Defense uh, this uh, agreement is on a reimbursement there basis. It's not as uh, uh, an actual oh. allocation, so it will be capped out at $150,000. Too easy. And nah. it's coming, and the funding is coming from the BHO yeah, yeah, to yeah, the yeah. county. By the way. <laughs> yeah. It's not the other way. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's the other. Thank you. <laughs> it's the other direction. Okay, solve that problem. Okay, 3G, Human Resources, Memorandum of Understanding between Thurston County and the Association of Deputy Prosecuting Attorneys. Yeah, this is a new item. You, you don't have the chance to uh, review last week. It was unexpected, but um, uh, Deborah Bergman has reached an agreement with the uh, uh, Deputy Prosecuting Attorneys Union. And as you may recall, it's a two-year uh, contract in which they open for a wage free opener. So this agreement, the the union agreed to the two percent cost of living increase. Oh, good. Thumbs up. Oh, that's very good. And also, they agreed to uh, 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 some uh, health insurance benefits. You previously authorized up to a maximum of three thousand five hundred dollars, and Debbie has been able to reduce that to two thousand eight hundred dollars. Right. So, um, if if uh, Debbie is listening, kudos to Debbie. <laughs> good job. Yes. And, and to the. Uh, yeah, and I think it was a good, um, the one outstanding um, wage free opener is, is still with the road deputies union that I might be coming up. Um, yeah. And I believe that's the only one that is still needs to be resolved. And to the association too. Yeah. All right, any questions, comments? No. That's all good news, yeah. Let's go with 3H, health, public health and social services, a resolution reclassifying a position of, takes a second, oh, health specialist number one. Yeah, this is uh, this is a uh, uh, reclassification request from the Public Health and Social Services uh, Department, where they like to reclassify an existing vacant position from Environmental Health Specialist One to Environmental Specialist. I mean, I'm sorry, from uh, Environmental Specialist Two to an Environmental Specialist One. So the impact of the budget goes from six thousand five hundred thirteen dollars to five thousand six hundred twenty-two dollars. That will be. $886 a month reduction 
or at 63% uh, decrease as a result of this reclassification. Yeah. Okay. Any questions, comments? No. No. Nope. Okay, we're good on that. And I think we're at 3I, uh, India. Yeah, that is your uh, weekly um, approval of the vouchers. Okay, well, this is department items and hoping to red sheriff versus corrections. That's a different story. So we're at four, the first one, and it's the Thurston County Jail Standards. Yeah. And, and I, uh, I have a, okay, I'm going to wait to hear because I had an issue with this. Yes, um, you requested to change to the sheriff's office. Unfortunately, the system didn't allow us to do that, so we're still working okay. on that. Okay, that's easy. So I, I apologize. That. That's um, no uh, the other item, when you had the uh, Chief Toma walk you through as to what the intent of this new standards, as you may recall, they'll give you a little bit of a piece of history. The, the last time they actually was uh, jail standards was passed by the board back in, two, in 1980, mid-80s. So certainly there is a need to upgrade the jail standards, and that's the proposal uh, that you heard from the Sheriff's Office and the Corrections uh, Chief. During that conversation, um, Commissioner Blake, you asked whether what is the, uh, the role of the Board of County Commissioners to approve the jail standards, considering the, uh, the sheriff is an elected official. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you asked, to, um, asked me to reach out to uh, your attorneys. They can provide you a perspective <laughs> okay. as to how, um, whether you are the approving authority or not. So I have received some feedback from Two of your finest, that will be Elizabeth Patridge and uh, Rick Peters. That's what we want, we want the answer. Yeah, what's the answer? And uh, both Wait, agree. Two different attorneys, yeah. same opinion? Same opinion. Wow. Oh, okay. And okay. Uh, they, uh, separately, they didn't talk to each other. Uh, and both concluded that perhaps uh, you should be <coughs> approving those jail standards. Okay. And I can walk you through the different RCWs if you like. I'll say them offline. Okay. I'll take them offline. That's all I need. Are you good? Yeah, fine, yeah. Okay. No problem. So for uh, the mm -mm, move to adopt. Okay, there's a motion. So we're good. Um, so we're at an item number five, which is public works, uh, an local agreement between the city of Tenino, Thurston County, and cooperation with Tenino City Park. Yeah, this is a, a new local agreement with the city of Tenino in Thurston County to have a cooperative um, activities in terms of maintaining an upcoming uh, memorial wall that is going to be located within the trail system. And also uh, within this agreement allows for a transaction of $150,000 in order to accomplish that project. Um, and this is for, uh, this agreement has been reviewed by uh, the city of Tenino and they don't have any comments. So this is for your final approval if you choose to. And uh, should that be uh, approved today, is there an actual document prepared that will be ready for your signature? Yeah, it's attached. The local agreement is attached on your documents. Yeah. Okay. And It uh, has been signed and reviewed by the prosecuting attorneys. Okay. And Tenino has not signed that document yet? Uh, the director is here to give right, you the, that's the, not the latest That's a great question. They have, yes. And it should be, the original should be here. For the board this afternoon if it's not already okay so whether it's adopted or not I'm on the agenda tonight at tonight uh, City Council meeting would I be taking a copy of that down or an original down with me or just talk about it what what's the process well the process is um, after you take an action if you decide to approve this action this afternoon you have two uh, commissioners present then the signing of the document usually comes a couple days after. A couple of days after. Okay. Uh, usually don't sign those documents um, uh, on the same day, but the action has been taken. Right. So the, uh, the document has been approved after you take an action this afternoon. Okay. So, and, and that may be something you want to deliver Vocalize. to the uh, city of Tenana this afternoon, this evening. Okay, good, thank you. Thank you for that. Thanks, Jennifer. All righty, so now we're on um, 5B, resolution call for seal bids for fish patches enhancement. Um, and, uh, Creek, uh, Creek. Yeah, items uh, B, C, and D are, are related. <laughs> yeah. 
and those are um, to allow the department to go and call for seal beds for the installation of fish uh, uh, passage culverts. Yeah. Um, and there's a total between items 5B, 5C, and 5D. Oh, yeah, 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 I see. Out yeah, a total yeah. of five uh, culverts. Mm -hmm. And so you may recall you authorized the department to go um, uh, prefabricated bridges mm -hmm. on three locations, and also you authorized the department to purchase uh, corrugated uh, culverts also for two locations. Sure. And this particular uh, uh, call for base is for the installation of those uh, bridges and culverts. Can you recall the amount? We wouldn't know the amount oh, we until the we received the bid. That's right. Yeah. Got it. I remember that was exciting to get these culverts going. Yeah. I just have a curious question. Yeah. If there was 107 bridges and we had three more bridges, does that make 110? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Seriously? Yeah. 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 Well, I well, think uh, I then think that the, falls into the whole TBD thing. Right, right. Yeah. and uh, and for funding on that. And uh, if I may, um, the the issue of removing fish barriers is is large. Oh, yeah, I got that. It's not a but problem. and and taking this is is the positive steps. I'd rather do a bridge, but in the future, a right. bridge costs a lot more. Money and uh, so. and also, uh, you know, if you as part of the TBD, you will have uh, here um, later reviewing the agenda for the TBD next week, mm -hmm. where the funding options will be discussed uh, okay. in front of you, okay. and um, we'll that may be an up. opportunity for you to elaborate on that. Yeah. Point. Okay. Good. Okay. Let's see where am I? So that got us all the way down to three. Um, five. Five C. D. Yeah. Five C. Five C. So we're on five. Go. Okay, so this is a contract award for the 2018 ship seal. Yeah, you. Um, silly. This is the. Uh, uh, we <laughs> received two bits um, for the uh, chip seal. And um, and the department is requesting for you to authorize award the contract to do little construction incorporated from <laughs> Bellevue, Washington. <laughs> Uh, for the amount of one million nine hundred ninety-one thousand three hundred ninety-three dollars and forty cents, and also the department's requesting to authorize up to ten percent of uh, uh, additional to cover for any unexpected overruns, for a total cost of the contract of two million one hundred ninety thousand five hundred thirty-two dollars and seventy-four cents, and this is going to be funded by the road fund, and is included in the current budget allocation. Nope. Okay, good. Let's move on to Central Services, uh, item number six in the department item. So Central Services authorized Central Services Director to advertise for RFQ, request for qualification. Yeah, you also review this, this item, and uh, Martin Case is here to answer any questions that you may have. The intent of this um, RFQ is to oh. secure an on-call services for um, many different uh, architectural and engineering um, expertise and services that we need to manage all their different needs and all the facilities that we maintain. Okay. Um, and, um, and again, Martin is here to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions about standby? Mm -mm. Not no. So number six is good. Moving on to number seven, community planning and economic development. Set a public hearing proposed for text amendments to Title 26. I believe this is a, a this long is time good. coming by the, by the commissioners. Four and years. this is a... Um, uh, to set the public hearing uh, for June 5th, 2018, uh, 5.30 in the afternoon. Uh, last week, you reviewed with staff some of the uh, proposed changes, and um, I do have this on the agenda later on to um, discuss in more detail whether no, okay. you'd like to eliminate some of the items on the table or not. Okay. But regardless, I believe setting the public hearing is something, oh, that you, yeah, yeah, is yeah. something you may consider mm -hmm. uh, because it's th that's the first step as to how you can change yeah, the sure. code on the Title okay. 26. Any problems with the date of June 5th? No, I'm just looking at it. Nope. Nope. Not, not at this point without, without checking the calendar. Oh, well, it's about to be conflicting. Talk about some wording. So now we're number eight commissioners and county managers items. Another call for seal bid for the official county newspaper. This is a yearly event, and uh, oh they will need to go through to select what oh. the official county newspaper will be for the period of July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2019. And this uh, requests us to set the public here for Wednesday, June 7th? It's not a public hearing, it's just to open up the call for seal bids. 
Oh, okay. Uh, the SID, uh, sorry, I'm, I was confused. To, um, for Wednesday, June 7, we'll be open the bids and we'll come back to you and give you the results of the bidding process. Okay. That'll be fun. That will be widely advertised so we can secure as many bids for a newspaper. We, we usually do. And uh, <laughs> as, as, as you may recall, the same conversation we had last year, mm -hmm. there is, uh, there is uh, usually probably maybe less than a handful of uh, proponents. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and at that point, whether you like to go with the low bid, is something, an option that you may have, yeah. or we probably want to go with uh, the newspaper to have more outreach to the community. That's something, some of the elements you may discuss as, as you decide what will be uh, the official newspaper that will carry on the mission of yeah, in the business of the county. Quality versus quantity and, and such. And so the same that, conversation I'll that, continue to have until I have a happy yeah, uh, I'm sure it's going to be a, a, we'll set aside a few minutes to discuss that. Thank you. All right, that takes us into what? Uh, we got all the items. Any questions on today's agenda, pre-agenda discussion? Nope. We're going to... We're going to move into the Board of Health and then come back to the other agenda, pre-agenda. So, Shall Board of Health for 5-8. Uh, hello, Shelly. Good morning, Shelly. Hi, Shelly. Yeah, yours. And thank you for attending yesterday. I appreciate that. Oh, that meeting. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> so we call the meeting to order. And from there, we have two proclamations. Oh, well, first we have the approval of the agenda. And we'll see if there's any revisions to that. If not, we'll move on to proclamations and presentations. And this one we have, uh, the first one we have is drink, Drinking Water Week. And I think, is Art going to be able to yes. provide something for that? Mm -hmm. And so... Who and John um, Winterfeller from the PUD is coming also, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Great. So we'll be able to do that. And the next proclamation we have is the Nurses Week. And I think, um, will you, you want to frame that one or you want us to frame Actually, it? Actually, we have Nicole Liz Davis there. Uh, she has some things to say too. Oh, sure. Liz? Sure. Okay. That's great. And well, Bonnie and Kathy, Bonnie Peterson, yes, Kathy Sherman. Sure. Great. We want to honor the water and the nurses this go around. <laughs> I always forget that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for item number three, opportunity for the public to adjust the board. Is there any issue that may present itself? Or? Not that we're aware of. Mm -hmm. How about you? Anybody? Romero? No. no. Lydia? Anybody? Just wondering under public health if it would be a... Uh, um, Summit Lake would come up. Summit, oh, Summit Lake. It may, but we haven't um, we haven't had a lot of feedback lately, or con too much controversy this time around. People are pretty, public pretty well about used to the drinking water. At this point. Yeah, yeah, last year we received a lot of emails, mm -hmm. and the commissioners that inbox this year. Well, and they use that lake to drink <laughs> from and we're declaring drinking water week or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, so. but, but I think it's, um, I, be, I believe it's the result of uh, public health and social services staff being proactive. Yes, yeah. Being proactive yeah, yeah. and announcing the, the upcoming issue and, uh, and just managing uh, some of the expectations to the residents of Summit Lake. So I, I, I like to believe that it's the result of the proactiveness of uh, staff. I understand there were additional signage signs that went up out around the lake last week or so. Yes, because the uh, DOH provided signage wasn't consistent with um, Dr. Wood's uh, health alert. So we had to reconcile the signage. Okay, thank you. Because we didn't want people to eat the fish from the water, and the signs didn't specify that. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll move into department items, and the first item we have is a uh, is an update from the Providence Community Care Center in downtown Olympia, and that is TJ coming to you, TJ LaRock coming? Yes, TJ's mm -hmm. coming. Just for clarification, do you want, do you just want to 
introduce him, or do you need me to say something before he? I'll let you do it. Is that all right? Yeah, that's sure. Cool. Maybe we'll frame it from a housing and homeless kind of thing. Okay, sure. TJ's talk about the CCC. Okay. Right, any questions on that, mm -mm. TJ? It's good mm -mm. to see TJ come back. So the next item we have is a Thurston Thrive's action team update, and so I think Prosecuting Attorney John Tunheim is coming to talk about the Hope Initiative. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. And this time it's more of a uh, survey that he's talking about. Is that yes, more the focus of it? Yes, that's the focus. Mm -hmm. We formed a group called um, Hope Thurston that's Hope. working on a community-wide assessment. Oh, he um, even has a Thurston logo now, I remember, yeah. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Hope Thurston. Okay. Uh, so takes us into the other item, which is drinking water program update in conjunction with the proclamation there. And I think Art is going to give some extra information along with Steve Peterson. Um, actually, Eric Iverson is going to speak um, instead of Steve Peterson today. Okay. Super. And does it cover, oh, it's the, I see drinking water, but is it, it's not really for lakes or anything like that, is it? Or is it, that's later on, I see it, sorry. No. I, I there was another one, okay. So there's a surface water monitoring safety item also on the agenda, so. Yes. And Art and Jane. Yes. Jane Montjoy, mm -hmm. Vinny. Yes, that's correct. Okay. And then number eight, we have, we have to, Find some items to talk about health wise. Mm, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know you've been very busy on health related <laughs> items and yeah. meetings. You take five, I'll take five. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> and kind of give us headlines of what the director's report. What do you got? It's hot. I don't have that yet. But <laughs> 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 I will, but it's afternoon. <laughs> How about Dr. Woods? Uh, she, she yes, here? she has. She will be here, and she has. Uh, a few items she'll be sh she'll be discussing. Okay. So a fairly robust but easy board of health deal, mostly informational. Is there any questions of anybody in the room on board of health? Anything you have to add? Nope. No, yeah. I suppose to say good morning, Lydia, because I didn't do that earlier. Good well, morning, Lydia. Nothing happens, huh? So I, I'm I'm glad to see that the meeting is planned to be finishing by 5.20 or so. Oh, it'll definitely be bad. Uh, I, I, as we, some of us need to attend a City of Olympia meeting at 5.30. Mm -hmm. Yes. So oh, yeah, I yeah, will yeah, yeah. encourage you to stay on schedule. Oh, we're still lucky. Yeah. <laughs> <No. Thank you. laughs> All right, thank you very much. Anything else, just let me know. All right, thank yep. you. So we're going to move into the Bora BOCC draft agenda for May 15, 2018. Yes. Do you need a copy of the agenda? Uh, I think I might, because mine is not coming up. No, it's not coming up. Anymore. No, but it'll come up on your on your link. No, it's not. Oh, no, it's not coming up on the link. No, I have to go back to the original up. page. So and it get should it. be on your pocket. Yeah, I was looking for it. Hang on a second. It's there. There's Board of Health. There's mine. I guess I do, because I don't have one. There's eight. Oh, there it is. Right there. Yes, it, I got it. Got it. Okay. Yep, here we go. So, on the 15th, uh, we'll still ask Commissioner Hutchins to be the uh, play, we'll conduct the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, approval of the agenda, and uh, board meeting minutes for May 15th, 2018. On the 15th of May, we have two presentations. Uh, one of them is the uh, National Law Enforcement Week, and right. so that'll be absolutely great to have the room full of law enforcement yes, officers and, um, throughout I'm, the entire county, yeah, mm -hmm. in the city, and whatever. Yeah, I'm trying to reach out to the sheriff's office as mm -hmm. well as some of the local law enforcement. So hopefully we we'll have some. I remember last year we scrambled. Yeah, we're not yeah, the last No, year. this time this time around, well, I'm not sure <laughs> we 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 align correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. And so the other proclamation is from Public Health and Social Services. An it's, a, of it's just an introduction mm -hmm. or a proclamation. Do we know her? Is she brand new? Uh, Liz Davis? Yeah. Uh, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah, she just came on board as the, as the, the new Child and Family Community Wellness <coughs> Division Director. 
Okay. And I think it will be great for uh, the public to um, <coughs> get to know her. So. <coughs> Uh, probably too far up. Is there uh, any uh, idea what the opportunity for the public to address the board? Um, not at this point. Yeah. How about county managers, item number two? If there's any items as a result of the public testimony today that I need to follow up, I will do so next week. Yeah, great. So I'll just move into consent items A through D, and the first one is from Central Services, a multi-year agreement for high-speed internet services at the Auditor's Elections Facility. Yeah, this is related to the Mudman facility. Um, uh, and uh, we don't have uh, a direct connection or, uh, to that facility, so this particular request is to get into a um, two-year agreement with Comcast for $6,032.40 uh, to provide um, a high-speed internet to the Thurston County Elections Facility. Any comments or questions on that? Where's the funding? That's already in their budget. It's also already included in the budget, yes. No additional request. Okay. No. Okay. So item 3B, approval of work session summaries in January 11th, February 8th, February 14th, and 22nd, and 28th. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that? Mm -mm. No? Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Item 3C, <coughs> from the Sheriff Lake Lawrence Regatta application. Yeah, this is a yearly event for the Sheriff's Office to provide security to the uh, Lake Lawrence Regatta event, and that is going to be held on September 14, 15, <laughs> and 16, 2018. And uh, this, again, is the, um, the Sheriff's Office provides the security services on an overtime basis, and it will not be affecting the response no. time. To they what? Will not be affecting the response, time. response time. This is going to be uh, up to the uh, Sheriff's Office who will provide those. And they, uh, they're reimbursed for that overtime, aren't they, yep. from the organization? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Is that the uh, Seattle Outboard Association that reimburses the county? Yep. Or the department? Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> All righty. <clears throat> Let's see here. Item 3D, which is the Auditor of Financial Services, and it's kind of standard. We'll look at that as we go along. So I'm going to move into department items, which is the first is Public Works, a contract award. <clears throat> a countywide restoration and resurfacing project, CRP 61508. Yeah, this is a, uh, a request from the department to award to Granite Construction Company from Olympia, Washington, to perform um, what we call an overlay program for 2018 for an amount of $1,770,750.50. Also, the directors, um, the department is requesting to approve an additional 10% for the director to uh, cover any unexpected um, activities for a total contract $1,943,825.55. This will be covered by the federal grant in the amount of $1,590,167. And the remainder of $357,658 will be covered by the road fund. It's already included in the budget. And the intent of this particular bid will be overlaying portions of Stellicum Road, Nisqually Cutoff Road, and Old Pacific Highway. And the director is here to answer any questions you may have. Any questions, Jennifer? Uh, no questions. I'm just happy to see it. Uh, it is a uh, an Olympia outfit. Mm, local. Yes, a local uh, construction company. Good. All righty, so that's number four. We'll move on to number five, oh, which is central services. Uh, authorized central services director to negotiate and execute a contract with an architectural firm, engineering services for 2525 Flex. Yeah, this is related to the to the Flex unit. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I believe um, I may ask Martin to come because I, I have uh, some questions I related to this item. Sounds good. Okay. Come on up, Martin. Your next contestant. So, right. uh, Martin, walk us through the, the bidding process, how many uh, respond bidders mm -hmm. have we received, and, and the team that has reviewed those proposals, and how you got to this point. Okay. And, um, and who is the, the firm that you might be looking at? Sure. Yeah. So, the commissioners will recall that last year we had gone out to bid uh, 
for a combined project trying to do both the facility design as well as the stormwater system improvement designs is one bid process that did not generate a successful outcome. So consequently, we split that apart. We successfully went out to bid for design services for the stormwater improvements earlier this year. And this part of the proposal is for the facility design. It was advertised uh, near the beginning of the year in February. We received four proposals in total. Two of those were deemed to have met all of the requirements of the RFQ and were invited forward to interview. Uh, those two firms are noted in the um, AIS, KMD Architects, and the DLR group, both out of Seattle. Following the interviews and a review of the uh, selection criteria, the panel uh, determined that uh, DLR group was the apparent successful proposal. The interview panel include representation, included representation from central services, our capital projects team and facilities team, uh, from public works, uh, Rick Thomas, and from Cor uh, Thurston County Sheriff's Corrections, uh, Chief Toma, and I think also Captain Eaton. Um, I think those Captain Eaton? Is that his? Is he a captain? Oh, but okay. George Eaton. <laughs> George. Oh, George. <laughs> um, oh, I know George, yes. So, um, at this point, they are ready for uh, uh, board authorization to go forward with an award to, uh, or for authorization to execute a contract and then go forward with uh, design services for the facility expansion. Okay, authorize and negotiate. So you're heading, you're just in like the RFQ, RFP? This is just the RFQ for design services. Mm -hmm. So we don't want a dollar amount in there right now until you get back, and then we can talk about a dollar amount. Okay. Yeah. Generally speaking, a design services contract is benchmarked at 10% of the uh, construction cost, but until we get to the construction right, cost that's what estimate. I'm for. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so my question overall is that you keep this uh, in fair play, if you want to say it that way, as the, this is not a question for Martin, it is actually an HR question of where we're at on for personnel to be hired against this, because I don't want one to out and maneuver, move forward so far beyond that we don't keep the two in tandem. Mm. Any discussion on that? Anything, thoughts, or update, or whatever? You know what I'm asking, right? Yeah, I, I, I know exactly what you're asking, Commissioner, because um, if I may, you don't want to be, the Commissioner does, doesn't want to put themselves in the position to build a facility without having the personnel to right. manage it. Right. And like yet, the yeah. So I think uh, uh, this facility, the construction of this facility will probably take uh, two years until we can have that open. We're and estimating I believe the end of 2020. 20, so thank you. And so at that point, as part of your budget decision points, uh, you will be considering allocating an amount to uh, create new correction uh, deputies sure. related to this. So we are working in tandem. There are some decision points the commission needs to be taken uh, both from the facilities point of view as well as from the personnel point of view, and those will be upcoming. No, something wrong, same thing. We don't want one to get ahead of the other, so tandem. It's got to work that way. Just reserve the right to, I'll say, hold or stop one and make sure the other one catches up. Absolutely. That's within your purview. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. You would have that, uh, a logical decision point on that would be once we complete design work, which will probably take six to eight months, we would then come back to you again before we would see, before we would go out to bid for the construction. So mm -hmm. there's another decision sure, sure, opportunity sure. Yeah. that you'll have. I don't think it is too far out. I'm just making a general statement. Okay. Yeah. All right, anything else? No. Anything else on no. five central services? No. Okay. So that completes May 15th uh, for the BOCC draft agenda. And then we're going to move into um, Transportation Benefit District. And I'll turn it over to Commissioner Hutchins. Come up, Jennifer. Thank you. Yeah, sure. <coughs> This is for the agenda, uh, the TBD, Transportation Benefit District, for May 15. Uh, about 3.30, we'll call the meeting to order, and we'll approve the minutes. And uh, any idea if we'll have any public comment at that point in time? I haven't heard. I haven't heard. One way or the other. Okay, nothing. 
And then uh, that takes us to item three, uh, department items, public works presentation on funding scenarios. And you actually have a PowerPoint presentation you're going to give. We do, yes. So this last meeting we talked a little bit about the system. We, we gave a little bit of background about the TBD, what it covers. And now this presentation will be a little bit more detail into the funding options, the revenue that could be generated, how we might do that, and then potential um, projects that could be done um, in the areas of preservation, um, safety, and technology. And we'll talk a little bit more about the why and some benefits as well. And um, Commissioner Blake brought up earlier, we're adding bridges, proposing, proposing to add bridges for Colbert and for fish, fish passage in Colberts. Uh, and that will add to our, uh, that would add to the inventory of bridges that we have in the county from 107 to 110. Yep. Um, and it, I forget how much it costs per bridge to repair or maintain, but it costs like millions of dollars for all of them cumulatively. I mean, lots of millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so are you going to give us a sound bite now or a, a news feed or foreshadowing on whether it be property tax um, or car tabs or sales tax or just run the gambit? <laughs> I, would, I would love to be able to wait until the 15th. I think that we talked a little bit about it before in terms of uh, uh, car tabs and some other <clears throat> options, mm -hmm. um, some that can just be done, some that, that would need voter approval. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it... I think it is best served kind of all together um, as opposed to piecemealing it. Okay. Commission, if that's okay. So those watching at home, stay tuned. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Romero. Uh, maybe I, if I suggest, um, you know, it's an umbrella. Um, the, the, the TBD uh, has two paths to how you can generate revenue um, for the transportation benefit district. One is consumatic. And the other one has to be approved by the voters. And, and I believe the department is going to walk you through the options that you have consumatic available to you, some of the nuances and, and, um, and, and, and the restrictions within, and also give you the options of uh, if you decide to go to the voters to support the Transportation Benefit District. So that and the larger context is the two paths the, the, the TBD has to generate revenues. All right. Uh, my comment is um, uh, I get stuck on bridges. I like the bridges portion of all this. I know there's roads and safety and innovation and all that. Um, but at some point in time, either not now or in the future, talk about the state, the um, state of bridges, I guess. I, um, okay. It's the 107, 110, pick your favorite number there. And, and worse, not so worse, and the best bridges, kind of what they look like, feel like, smell like, so to speak. Okay. Okay, I'll just leave it at that. I have personal experiences okay. of not having a bridge and having to cross a ravine. It's kind of tough without bridges. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll make it's a different sense. lifestyle. Life yeah, out of this, yeah. So. <laughs> and it's tougher than you think. And I had the best equipment money could buy. So. And, you, and, so. and sometimes you, you don't realize when you cross a bridge yeah, and a counter that, road. Yeah. Because sometimes as you have small yeah. bridges, you don't see I them. I do now. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't before. It might cost a lot, but we need bridges. But I understand there's other items of the TV yeah. that need to be talked okay. about. So. That's just me. So it's kind of a foreshadowing device, and I will throw this out without being a spoiler alert. Okay. That no matter what vehicle that we may, no pun intended, use for funding, mm -hmm. uh, it would be a minimum of $1.4 in revenue generated up to probably a max of just over $9 million. Uh, but if, if we don't do anything, no million are coming in, right? Correct. Correct. And right That's now okay. we don't have any funding mechanism for roads and such other than what's in place now where we're not implementing uh, strategies for increasing our revenue for roads. That's kind of a roundabout way of saying no point in again intended roundabout. Um, so this is going to generate some uh, some good discussion I because there's so. some real basic philosophical beliefs that, that everybody in the county has regarding this. It, it, yeah, and, and if I may. Um, I, and this is just my personal perspective, the, the transportation sy system is the backbone of uh, an economic development for the county. And, um, and, and I believe the commission is keyed on, on improving and increasing the economic development vitality for the county. 
but without having a, a good infrastructure in place, that may not materialize in the future. So roads, bridges, and anything associated with the, uh, the infrastructure, transportation infrastructure, has to be part of that conversation, has to be part of that solution, and has to be part of our future. Well, and nationally we're hearing infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. Is there uh, any funding that is currently or coming available for, uh, for roads and such to Washington State all the way down to Thurston County level that you're aware of? Or is it drying up, drying up, or is it non-existent, or do we expect something coming? Well, I don't think it's non-existent. Um, and, and I think that over the, the last few years, there's been lots of discussion about the need for funding. And I think there's funding that comes for uh, capital projects. I think some of the challenge we have is the ongoing maintenance um, and operations of, of our existing infrastructure, which is why um, I think our transportation benefit district was set up the way that it is to be able to support the preservation of our existing infrastructure. Okay. <coughs> It's just a, a real pickle because I don't want to take food off people's tables. Mm. Absolutely. But I realize there's a real deficit when it comes to our roads and the infrastructure and the, the lack of money. Mm. Yeah, and, and federal, 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 and the state uh, grant, they're always going to be part of the solution. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, not just there's in kind of but any other jurisdictions, not just on the state, but across the country are looking for the same funding sources. So the competitive process yeah. becomes very difficult. And the same challenges with infrastructure that we have as well. And, and, and yeah. this, is, this is a local option. And we're, every, every single penny we decide to go this direction will be generated and will be for a specific use, and a specific use, which is the transportation system in Thurston County. Right, OK. Anything further, Jennifer? Anything? No, thank Anything? you. Sure. No, I'll definitely have some questions on have the TBD. Very good. Thank will you. Uh, will 20 minutes be sufficient time to get through the presentation, question and answer and all that? Through the presentation and some q and I guess it depends on how many questions you have, but yes. Okay. That's what's a lot of here at this point in time. I just want to make sure you have, <laughs> we'll give you sufficient time though, okay. to get through Thanks. this. Um, and then, uh, then we adjourn and that's it for the uh, TBD. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, sir. <laughs> the president. So funny. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do the chair's prerogative here. I'm going to skip proclamations and awards and ask a question about the Title 26 transfer of development rights and TST discussion. And my first question is: the transfer of development rights more of a public works or a <coughs> CPED discussion? Uh, CPED discussion, okay. and I have to ask the staff to come and present that to you. Okay, so why don't we do the TST to PHSS discussion, and then, then we can go back up to Title 26 yeah. and transfer and knock those two out. So yeah, and I and break for anybody. I didn't even think of that. Oh, you want to take a break? Uh, I think if you want to do the TST transition, yes, then exactly. break. I don't, I don't care. Yeah, yeah. And, um, I don't need one. I'm just concerned about staff. Oh. Just to two seconds. I'll take a break. <laughs> Just to frame the issue, commissioners, okay. um, this is a follow-up on the decision that you made back um, to move the operations and the management of the TST, the treatment sales tax, yeah. to public health and social services. As a result, um, you asked um, staff to uh, have a conversation as to how that transition will occur and without having too much of you know, obstacles along the way. And the reason that Shelley and, and Robin were a little bit late this morning, where they were having that conversation on the uh, TST. Yeah. So the they're here to... The Not that nope. conversation, but a conversation. A conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but they're both more perfect. But anyway, so, so, like so anyway, so they're here to give you an update. <laughs> right. they're too perfect. So Shelley and I wanted to update you on the transition yeah. plan. I was totally messed up. The work we're this morning was talking with um, Todd, Toma, and jail staff uh, Mark Freeman and the HO staff and Terry Hinnon about the um, addressing the mental health provision of services in the jail. Um, so that was one of many conversations okay. that is uh, being led by TST. I want to make sure that this is not uh, muted. Um, so that uh, we are trying to make this transition as smooth as possible. So what okay. we wanted to report on Let's the start transition. start with the money first, huh? 
you'd like to start with the money. Sure. money is okay. The money. Um, so looking at the money, there are two issues. One is the extreme uh, interconnectedness, if you will, in the current budget um, because the uh, TST program runs through the general fund in the commissioner's office and then there are also a lot of tentacles in internal services. So what we've talked about is that the time to make the switch on the money is January 1. Um, and we've been working with all of the internal service rate setters, letting them know that TST is moving over. We've talked to Central Services. We've talked to Ron Haney. Um, and the second factor in the money air arena is that Shelley's accounting staff are um, understaffed at the moment. They've not been able to yet, I don't know where you're at in filling the uh, grant contract finance position. So just before you, is no. there any showstoppers? And I understand this is a concern you're going to answer to, but is there any showstoppers? No, no. Okay, okay so go ahead. No, we're, we're progressing. Oh, I was just going to say, um, as I think I shared with you at a previous meeting, we have to go go back out for that grant contracts manager position and right. Marsha's on vacation. She returns on tomorrow. Right. So we'll be we'll and be fast tracking that as best and we can. Corinne is going on maternity leave and um, wow. yep. And uh, like at any moment now, <laughs> any, she's any minute. in the office. Yeah. Today, any minute. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, totally wow. any minute. Carissa and and they they've got yep. Um, Whitney. So it's exciting. <laughs> Brian. Um, so the other person, uh, they had a temporary finance staff, uh, Jenny, who has accepted a permanent position in public defense. Oh. So she is short accountants. And to help get through that, what uh, I have offered to Marsha is that our office will continue to pay the TST bills um, and process all of the financial end through the end of this year so that they can get their accounting people in place and then we can transition it over to them. We'll take another look at it in October to see if they're ready. If they're not, we can manage it through the end of the year. Um, so that's the money end. Uh, the, on the personnel end, we're um, transitioning Carrie and the new data analyst, Pam, uh, to Shelley's shop on July 1. Um, so that gives Shelley enough time to work it into her organizational structure uh, and to do the physical location in uh, the Lily uh, building um, to have a place for them to land. We're currently making sure that Shelly is in all of the TST meetings. Carrie and I are meeting with Shelly on a regular basis um, to ensure that she's coming up to speed on all of the hot topics um, so that when she takes over on July 1, she'll be up to speed and ready to run. So I think it's going yeah. pretty smoothly. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Thank you, Robin. That was. I don't really have anything else other than that to add. She, she hit all the points. Does she have a question? Anything? Anything? Yep. We're good then. Right. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. All right, let's take a break. Thank you, Shelley. And we'll, if something changes, we'll come back and update you on this. Uh, break till uh, uh, 10 after. Okay. Yeah, just a short, quick break. Mute. Leave your microphones on the table.
first, and then we'll talk about transfer development rights. So yep. on Title 26. There we go. Good grief. Every, you turn it everybody? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we going to do with Title 26? So on Title 26, you, you will be considering this afternoon setting a public hearing. Oh, in, the, in the public hearing, as you may recall, it was related to a briefing you uh, received from the staff last week. And if you can open the attachment, and I'll walk you through to the table. I see it. Um, um, let me refresh your memory. Uh, it was a conversation related to item number seven. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whether you like to keep item number seven, mm -hmm. so for the public to comment on the entire proposal, mm -hmm. or you would like to take item number seven, and that will go to the to the public to review without it. I will. Um, I think it was some a couple of thoughts as to the benefits of each one of those. Um, yeah, I know where I'm at. <laughs> so um, that will be for your consideration. Wait one second. He had bringing up his. Almost there. Too many clicks. <coughs> Is it on? Uh, I want to get the title twenty six. Yeah. All right. Yep, and go to go, numbers, go to number seven. It's about quarter, three quarters way down. Page seven. More, 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 more. There you go. And that right there, number seven was. Fair to comply. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So I can't remember, Commissioner Hutchins, if you were part of this briefing. I don't know if you know. Yeah, I don't think. Give me the background. No. That didn't sound familiar. So, um, so let me um, give you additional background. Um, this is, uh, uh, I believe, a long-awaited um, effort the commissioner, the commission has uh, uh, seen as to how uh, uh, staff, how you may consider a change in Title 26, and this is related to the civil infraction, civil penalties, and violations associated with uh, non-compliance. So, staff provided you with uh, this table uh, provided the commission last week. And the first table is some of the items that will be included as part of the code violation description. And on the bottom of that page, we have an stri strikeout version. Mm -hmm. That is the how the uh, the existing uh, table is, and how the proposed revisions are, which is reflected on the clean copy on the top of the page. Um, uh, Commissioner uh, Blake and Commissioner uh, Edwards had a conversation related to. Um, item number seven, which is failure to comply with energy conservation code. That seemed to be uh, over excessive. Uh, I believe the conversation went, went on those terms. And, uh, and the staff's perspective on that was that uh, this is related to state uh, regulations that we need to comply in terms of every single home needs to be uh, uh, with en energy conservation, and that's part of the code. Um, and I believe that conversation evolve into whether um, you would like to send this table with including item number seven for the public to comment as part of the public hearing that you will be receiving on uh, June 7th, or you would like to direct the staff to take item number seven out and the public will not be seeing that as part of their um, uh, review. Um, and I'll leave it there to see if you can have any questions so far? Do you have any more to add about that? About number seven? Not necessarily number seven. The one piece that we talked about in the last discussion was this table is uh, to help citizens, mm -hmm. and it's not necessary. The Title 26 code that we've already gone through exists as, as you have already approved. This table is just a quick table access for citizens to understand more clearly what the class one violations are, the, the big ones. Uh, and so we can we can add or subtract from this table as you'd like, and that's where the discussion was. When I read number seven, what that means to me is insulation, double pane windows, turning your lights off, fix your dripping faucets, that kind of stuff. Of course, that's not energy, but I, I'm looking. At, but I don't know what exactly what the code says or what it means. And so it relates back to uh, a state uh, RCW that they have voted that this uh, energy conservation code is a class one violation. 
again, it's in the Title 26, but we don't necessarily have to call it out in this table. Uh, but this was an effort to align with just to dot our, dot our I's and cross our T's to make sure that everything was connected. And that, yeah. And so it, with the RCW, it does outline each one of what energy conservation code is, and I don't okay. have that at my fingertips. And it's part of RCW. So we either leave it in or we take it out, but even if we take it out, it still exists. It still, still exists. exists, yeah, and it still can be enforced. But this quick access table, it just won't be on the okay. quick access table. No direction? Oh, sure. What's your comment? And, and so just another real quick thing. Sorry to interrupt there. Uh, what we've done here is we wanted to make it really clear the box code violation description is the actual verbiage as it relates to the Title 26. And then the examples kind of give a more um, layman terms so you understand what those are saying. So one relates to one of the examples just on the list. Yeah. Well, when I read these one through uh, eight, they make sense to me. Right on. Uh, failure to abate. Okay. Change occupancy. Okay. Stop work order. You have to comply. But as soon as I read number seven, I started thinking, am I in compliance or not? Okay. What does it mean? I'm, I'm for taking it out. It still exists. I just don't want to confuse or scare or intimidate the public. This is my thought up front. My vote so we're done? <laughs> Gary and I said keep it in. Did you? Okay, then. There you have it. I say take it out, they say keep it in. Here's your direction. Only for discussion. What, on, for discussion. Only. You, you, depending yeah. on, on the public testimony you receive, you may want to take it out because this is not your final decision on, on how the table is going to okay. work. Okay. This is your decision is whether how you want to present the information to the public to comment. That's the only decision that you have. Okay. Okay. So uh, what I assume is okay as presented, and uh, that information will go to the public for comment after you take an action this afternoon. Is that all right? Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now we go on to transfer development rights. You brought it a good point. Take it out and keep it in. Keep it in and take it out. <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> now we're deciding that this afternoon, though, for the public hearing. We're just for the public hearing. Public hearing date, yeah. Okay. Hello, Allison. Hello. <laughs> TDR, TDR. Today I'm here to talk about the Transfer of Development Rights Program and the, an opportunity um, to work through this program, which helps to conserve agricultural lands of long-term significance in the county. So it's a tool that we have in the county that is underutilized by most accounts. However, in this particular case, and what I'm here to, to give you a heads up on, is that we had some citizens come in and apply to have their property down in the southwestern corner of the county certified under our transfer of development rights program, um, and that easement is going to be circulated for your signature. So I wanted to give you a heads up about that. That was going to be coming in front of you and let you know if it, answer any questions that you might have about the program because I'm I'm quite certain it will be the first time any of you will be seeing one of these because we don't have them come in very often. Um, so I don't I don't know how top of mind the transfer of development programs is for either of you, um, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. The general idea is that um, the way that our program is set up right now, folks who are zoned long-term agriculture are allowed um, under that program to participate in our transfer of development, development rights programs. They can say, we want um, to not subdivide or build on this land in the future. We want to keep it in open space, agriculture, large parcels. And so essentially, we're going to um, detach our development rights from the land. And uh, the certification process, which is what the steel hammers in this case have applied to do, will detach 12 development rights from their 64 acre property. And, um, and then they have an opportunity to put that on the market and someone who wants to build at a higher density in one of our urban areas where the other side of the TDR program applies 
can purchase that one of those development rights and apply it in those areas. So that's the general overview. Any questions? Anything well, you asked where about? it was in our minds, and I don't know about these guys, but it's not coming up for me now. <laughs> so I'm not sure I've heard that before. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's interesting. Uh, it's probably only about, I think, the fourth property coming in to get certified since the program was created, uh, mm -hmm. and the program was created in the 90s. It's not one of our most robust programs. Okay. What's your recommendation? So I don't know. What, what, what do we need to decide on or recommend? My recommendation is that you sign the easement when it's circulated to you. Okay. Okay. I'll take into consideration. Because the citizen wants to do this with their land. Yeah, it's an application from the citizen. And how many acres, how big is it? It's uh, 63, 60 just under acres. 70, 64 acres. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they have one house that's on the property. And it's a, uh, landowners live down there uh, quite a long time. They've been farming for a long time. And um, they have a farm property on there, and so one of the development rights is devoted to that, but the remaining undeveloped development rights will be certified and detached from the property. So it's advantageous for the landowner, because that's what he or she wants to do. Mm -hmm. Is there a disadvantage to the county, um, or the environment, or anybody else? Cost, or legal, or anything like that? So what it does is, I mean, it doesn't change. The, the land is currently in agricultural use, and um, the difference is that it couldn't be further, if they're certified and detached, that property couldn't be further subdivided. Cannot be. Cannot be, because the development rights have been taken off of it. So okay. The future owner has to abide by yep. the farming use. But those transfer development rights, do they go to other, just within the county? Yes. So they can purchase those, and where we have uh, a lower density, they can build higher by purchasing these development rights. Yeah, and those, so. So it's kind of a win bit win for the farmer and win for a future right. developer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's seen as an economic tool for, for farmers that they, um, they, you know, what we talk about with, with preserving agriculture is how important it is to maintain large parcels of land. This doesn't require, it's not an easement that would require a future owner to keep it in agriculture, but it does not allow the land to be subdivided and built on. So uh, you have 65 acres, so potentially it, it's, uh, even though it's in, it's in long-term ag, so it would still be a uh, 20-acre minimum size, so it could be subdivided to a certain extent. No, but it wouldn't go to a land trust. Under this program? No. no, I mean, they could sell it to a land trust in the future. But they still live on the land, they still pay taxes on the land, none of that changes. Okay. Um, yeah. So they still own the development rights? They own They're the development just rights. Detached from yes. the property mm -hmm. itself. If you think about the concept of property rights, right. and they always describe it as this bundle of sticks uh, where you have the right to the land and also the right to do different things with the land. So. Your development rights are a stick, your mineral rights are a stick, and, and there are different programs where you can take those sticks away hmm. and transfer them around. And this is a program that we have in the county, uh, and um, you know, there are certain zone, zoning districts, and we, collect, we, we partner with the cities on this program, so there are certain zones in the urban growth areas and in the urban areas where if people want to build at a higher density, than is typically permitted by that zone, and it's only specific zones, they need to purchase a transfer, a transferable development right. So is this within a UGA? This is not. So, so, so it's a, the way it's set up is to be a transfer from rural area to an urban area. Okay. Okay. And the future developer buys it directly from the landowner. So yep. it's a tool, and it's a they get to keep farming, and they get to uh, sell those rights. Yeah. How does someone know that there's <laughs> rights out there to be bought? Well, they can get in touch with me <laughs> at the county. Do, developers, it's just developers know this, so the developing community will be aware of this action as it occurs. And in the future, they'll say, hey, here's this pot. 
we, we don't see it. I caveat often, that a little bit to say that it's not a program that's well known or understood. Mm -hmm. um, although it exists, it's not well utilized. That's part of the reasons why this program, a review of this program, and, and potential updates to make it function better has been on the comprehensive plan docket as an item, even though it is the lowest priority. Very interesting. It's a really great program. Um, you know, and you'll see we're getting a lot of comments in the comprehensive plan. There's a lot of people in the community who are really interested in the concept of transfer of development rights. It's a private market transaction, so it's a way of getting at a lot of the goals that we want to have in land use, you know, conserving rural lands, encouraging greater urban development, you know, uh, per helping to support agricultural lands, helping to preserve open space in a way that isn't financially burdensome to private property owners who are on those lands and want to conserve. So the landowner applies to the county, mm -hmm. and then the county goes about certifying and, and such. Yep. So they're they're paying fees to they the county. They pay a fee to have their property certified. Mm -hmm. So they came in and applied. I reviewed their property against the criteria and you know, determined how many development rights um, could be detached from the property, and that's 12, according to the formula that we have in our code. Okay. And then um, I drafted up the easement. It's the first thing they need to do is sign this easement, and you need to sign the easement. And that's been reviewed by our prosecuting attorney's office. Mm -hmm. And then they, um, and then we issue them the certificates, and there's a couple of other forms, and they have to record, do some recording with their property. That's what I was going next, recording fees. Yep. Uh, but are they paying just a flat fee, or is it a flat fee and then staff time? It's a flat fee. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. So what is the pleasure of the board? Uh, next Tuesday. Or next, next, uh, next you don't Tuesday. need to take action in an official meeting. I just send it to you and you uh, can sign it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Send it Thursday. Mm -hmm. If you think of it kind of like with con the conservation futures easements that you sign, right. it's mainly, I, didn't, you know, I don't want it to show up in front of you and you yeah. have never heard of it before. Uh, I'll bring back next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we, we direct you. Okay. And if you have other questions about the TDR program, uh, when you see this, if you have questions about the easement, I'm happy to answer those. I do. Mm -hmm. So I'll get Aaron and put some time on the calendar. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All righty. Let's do uh, either we can do PIO check in or advisory boards and commissions. PIO. PIO. What are we doing? Let's go. PIO. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Um, so uh, I've been working with um, Emergency Services. They're getting ready to roll out uh, the Thurston Community Update or Thurston Community Notification, which is a replacement to AlertSense. Um, and this is uh, also in conjunction with um, uh, with Smart 911, something that TCOM is employing. It's kind of a joint system, so they're going to be. Uh, they're going to be working on uh, doing some public outreach, encouraging people to apply for that. So I've developed a communications plan for them. I've sent that to them, and they're uh, in the review process of that right now. Um, and they're going to be carrying that on through January 31st, and we're we'll working in, uh, uh, closely with them. Um, I've also um, been working on the JPCAT story uh, for OpenGov. I have that drafted, and I've sent it to Megan for review. Um, we'll be sending it out to the, um, the different people involved with that, and hopefully be able to get that out. Um, sometime in June, but that's just talking about the jail population um, crisis action team and some of the initiatives they're taking there. So it's a good story to tell, and um, I'm working closely on that. Um, those are the high-level things I'm working on now. Um, we also have our social media campaign going on, centered on the Thurston 2040 um, uh, comprehensive plan update. Uh, so we're in, week, we're in week five right now. Um, week six is going on. People are submitting photos, um, and that's going really well. So any questions? That's all I have. I do. About two or three weeks ago, uh, I mentioned to you that uh, I had some constituents that were concerned with the live streaming, that they, uh, uh, the, the, uh, or the, the visual was okay, the video piece, but the audio was less desirable. It was inaudible or not clear or fuzzy or cutting in and out and such. And you said you were going to check with uh, uh, T TCM. Uh, what would you find out? So, um, what I asked was how we can make the, so I, I don't think it's the agenda setting that's the issue. 
the problem with agenda setting is making sure people talk into this microphone. Mm -hmm. um, you guys' microphones work great, and we may need to look into getting a new microphone so it picks up a little bit better, because this, is, this one's the problem, is because oh. you're not able to hear people. Um, I'm wondering if the actual issue they're complaining about is when you have your board meetings and the voice and the video don't match. And when one of you starts talking um, in TC Media, they have to change the microphone, so it takes a few minutes to catch you when you start talking. And uh -huh. so if Romero starts talking, it takes a few seconds for them to go, oh, they're talking, so they have to turn on the mic. Um, so I'm wondering if maybe that's part of the issue. So I reached out to TC Media to ask them if there's a way that they can look into how to make that work better, and they said it's a YouTube issue. I don't know if it actually is, because when we were in 152 and the, the director's panel was going on, it worked perfect. Um, and so I asked them about the that. The did. For, yeah. for when we were down in 152 and the directors were speaking, yep. their voice and their audio and, and visual matched up perfectly. So it wasn't an issue down there, um, but it's an issue in this room. And so I asked about that and they said maybe it's a bandwidth issue. Well, I went back and looked at a um, public hearing that we had in the evening and it, it did not match. So I, I'm asking them to look into it further. I think it's a room 280 issue. Has anybody died in this room or something? I don't know. Well, I don't know. That's well, behind the panel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at the uh, League of Women Voters is where this came up. Okay. And we were, I was explaining how uh, we video, we're online, we're on TCM and such. And I said, oh, by the way, we're doing live streaming now with the work sessions. And then that's when I heard uh, comments that the live streaming was the issue with uh, the, the poor quality of the audio. Because I think that, because I, I mean, and I think that that's this. That I think be. this is the problem. So we might need to look into getting a new microphone because this, I think this microphone is pretty old. That maybe um, updating this will help with that to catch the voices outside because you guys' voices sound great. The the little ones pick up really well. Um, I have people that are watching and providing me with feedback. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> as long as you're close to it, yeah. Um, but I think it's I think it's the handheld. You're mic. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the handheld mic is the problem. Okay. <laughs> so um, I've, I've asked TC Media to look into that. Good. Thank you. So we'll get you more to come on that one. I'm done. Uh, on the social media, how close are we to hitting our goals for this year? Are we on target, off target? Mm -hmm. uh, so we are on target for uh, three channels. Those are YouTube, Instagram, and uh, Twitter. Um, just as a reminder, we're looking for 6,000 followers on Twitter, yep. 100 subscribers on YouTube, yep. and 1,000 um, or 100 subscribers on YouTube, 1,000 subscribers on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, we're at 537 on Instagram, and we've just really kind of got through the first quarter, so we're on a pretty good trajectory to reach that. We're at 62 on YouTube, and again through the first quarter, so we're a pretty good trajectory to reach that. Mm -hmm. And Twitter, we're approaching um, we're approaching 5,000 now, so. Uh, where the, the one we're struggling with is Facebook. Um, we have seen substantial um, social media growth on that platform over the last six weeks, largely due to this photo contest we have going on. Um, we normally average about 10 to 12 likes a week. We're seeing about 30, 30 to 35 likes a week now. Um, so there is some positive growth there, but um, we may need to look at some other ways of uh, of getting some additional followership because we're at 3,400 right now and we're looking for 5,000. So we'll need another about 1,700 to reach our goal by the end of this year. I have a comment, but do we, how can we get there in the sense of getting people to it? Do we need to, I'm just being facetious to make a point, uh, flipper boards, get out there on the corner and little signs, do a sandwich board or go to like Lake Fair Parade or whatever and hand out stickies saying go to that, you know? Just trying to figure out how to get people off. Yeah, and so part of part of why we saw numbers go down at the beginning of the year is because Facebook changed their algorithm, yeah, yeah. which makes it so that organizations, businesses do not show up in people's feeds as easily as they used to. Dang it. So we have to pay to get our stuff to show up in feeds uh, more regularly. Um, so what Brian's been doing is is boosting um, some of the like the um, 2040 photo contest, he's boosted a few of those, and that brings in followers because since we're paying for it, it, it puts it in front of people and on their feed. So, okay. so it's working that out, trying to figure out when's the best time to boost, what we should boost to get that in front of people a little bit better. So that's what he means by his point. Who, 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 the photo contest, 
uh, who's judging, who's deciding, who's... So the users are deciding, actually. So what I do is I get the, um, I get the photos um, Monday through Thursday, and on Friday I share them. And the photo that receives the most engagements, likes, shares, okay. comments, that's the one that gets selected as the, um, as the winner of that week's theme. Um, at the conclusion of this, 11 weeks, I send all those photos to Allison, and those will be included in the comprehensive plan under that chapter. So that's kind of the uh, that's kind of the incentive to be a part of it. So, we've, <laughs> yeah, and you get photo credit for it too. So your name will be oh, featured there with your with your photo. Okay. Um, so I just go in and I calculate the total there, and I, I share it that way. So they're the ones that are deciding. I'm just the, I'm just the messenger. <laughs> and one more question: So what you see? What are the in the next thirty days? What are some of the hottest stories you're going to focus on? So um, JPCAT is one I'm focusing on right now pretty heavily. JPCAT is what? Uh, Jail Population Crisis Action Team. Um, so I'm working on that right now. That's probably my highest level. Um, I'm also going to be working with emergency services on uh, doing um, a Thurston uh, community update. That's like that five-minute segment we did for the comprehensive plan um, to kind of get word out about Thurston Community Alert. Um, and then I got a news release that's going to go out about that as well. So those are the two big high-level things. Um, other than that, I don't really have don't really have much in terms of stories other than the Thurston County connection that's going to be going out. So, I think that Smart 911, um, which if you don't know what that is, it's where you can go into the Smart 911 system and make profiles for each person in your family, so that if you do call 911, it shows up in the system as you know you have a two-year-old, a five-year-old, a dog and to adults and so when when they're responding to your home they know what to look for you have these allergies you have these so um hopefully that will generate some response because that's going to be really important for people to sign up for and in conjunction with that it's the same exact system that you go in and sign up for the thurston community alerts so you can sign up for both at the same time so hopefully pr promoting that is going to get a lot of feedback and a lot of responses for that because it's really important mm -hmm. and um, I'll just can I go into mine or are you having more questions for Brian yeah, uh, regarding Facebook as over the last few months as they've taken a beating and self-beating uh, have we seen our followership or engagement on Facebook kind of flatline a little bit though because of all the negativity and lack of security and such no we've actually seen the exact opposite whoa um, I, there was. I don't think. I don't think our. Uh, from our perspective, I don't think we took a big hit from um, what's going on with Facebook internally with uh, with what they have going on. We've been pretty solid. Uh, we actually saw um, some of our highest engagement um, and our highest uh, reach um, in the last month. So okay. uh, for this year, uh, has Commissioner Blake submitted photos, or is he open to submitting photos, or who can submit photos? Anybody can Anybody. submit photos. Is there a theme, you say, for a week? Yep. I announced it on Mondays um, around 9.30 a.m. What, what's the theme this week? Transportation. Okay, then. Uh, mine, I'm waiting for mine's best selfies. <laughs> <laughs> Without you in it. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Um, something that I've wanted to bring forward is I was contacted by CGI Promotions. Um, actually, I was contacted by them last year, and they were talking about um, offering us a video series. It's about six video, six to seven videos. One of them is about your county, and then you pick the topics for the following five or six, like agritourism or economic development, um, budget. Uh, so you get six free videos. So basically, they're about a minute and a half to a minute and 45 seconds long. Um, what they offer is the videos. You get full editing um, rights. You get all the footage, including the aerial footage that they take of your county. They um, come back and they update the videos. I believe it's three years. Might be a year. I'd have to look into that. Um, but what they ask for in return is to reach out to local businesses for adver advertising dollars. Um, our partner, our uh, bordering county, uh, Grace Harbor County, has done this. So what I'd like to do is send you guys the link to their video so that you can look and see what they've done um, and see how many advertisers have, have said yes to it and provided money for them to do it. Um, we could have nobody 
say yes, they'll provide money and they'll still do the free videos. Um, and they do have a policy that they will not contact alcohol, marijuana, I'm just gonna ask that, yeah, vaping, Good. any kind of nicotine, <laughs> any kind of explicit adult type things. They don't they don't contact those businesses. Um, and then we can also say you can't t contact this type of business either. So we have we have a bit of control over that. Um, so it's something that I just want to send. I'll send you the information about if you want to look at it. And if that's something that we want to move forward with, please let me know. If not, I'll let her know that we're not interested. But we need to get on the schedule because they'd like to tape in late summer. Is this yes. CDI? CGI. C I don't know what that's. Charlie for. Gulf India. Yes. Okay. Have yeah. y'all seen it? Either one of y'all. I have, and um, this is a, a high-quality high video production. Mm -hmm. Really, is, is I mean, it's, it's very nicely done. Mm -hmm. I've seen some of the other, not just the Great Suburb County and other counties, and um, but I think they they catch the advertisement. Yeah, I want you to y'all to get together and figure that. Yeah, out. they That's they, they catch the advertisement, yeah. and, and and whether we. There's some controls as to what type of advertisement can go on the on the yeah, county website, it's the one but is the um, is, is the is the perception of uh, advertisement in that county web page is really that is that is for me that is the uh, the, 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 the the issue. So yeah, is it a is it a potential violation of the constitutional prohibitions? about county resources being used for private business. Yeah, all that needs to be vet out. But uh, Well, uh, we've had Elizabeth, last year Elizabeth mm -hmm. looked at the contract and yeah. looked at everything and she said that it, she didn't see an issue with it. Okay. Um, well, and yeah, and they check. do, yeah. I mean, they, their focus is, low, is government. And so they've done those. Yeah. I mean, it's, we'll take one more look in there. Yeah. So from the legal point of view, Elizabeth did weigh mm -hmm. in. She looked at it, no issues. Um, but I, I, I would like you for you to view the videos and, uh, and more about is uh, managing expectations and managing the perception. Okay. Yeah, and so it's not on our website. It's a link that takes you to their website. And so it's not actually hosted on our website. But we still, just provide is, the, a link. is the link. There's still a perception. Because we have Thurston though. County and mm -hmm. it talks about Thurston County. Yeah. And then on around this screen is going to be advertisement. Exactly. Okay. But I'll send you the information so that you guys can look at it and check out the videos. And, and but aside from that is high quality production yeah. video. Right? Wow. Nothing like nice. TCF, <laughs> with all yeah. the respect. What's the uh, the home base of this uh, organization, CGA? Uh, I think, I can't remember. I'll, I'll it is look. Washington it State? It is not though? Washington State, no. Okay. They're, they're a national, a national company. I think it's Utah, right. maybe. Maybe. Um, but I'll, I'll let you know for sure. All right. Thank you. And the only other thing I have is the um, Courthouse and Civic Center project. I've gotten a list of names um, from the elected officials that I'm going to start reaching out to. Um, and hopefully we're going to have 18 to 22 represented, citizen representatives on the group that the citizens are really going to take on um, being the citizen voice for this project. So, so more to come on that. Just wanted to touch base on that. Okie dokie. I'm going to move on to advisory boards and commissions. Can you hear me? Oh, we need the microphone. Oh. I have to remember this. <laughs> of it's all not people. For, it's not for this room, it's for, for the, the, for the public. Live, live streaming. Lava Nita Bowmark, Clerk of the Board <laughs> for the Board of County Commissioners, going over advisory boards and commissions. Um, the list before you has. Um, you can see there are no items on today's agenda. There have been some agri uh, applications received um, for the Agra Tourism Advisory Committee. There's one vacancy available. The application is from a Paul Windler. And um, have you reviewed the application? And you have not. Okay. It is attached to your packet. Right behind the uh, agenda of advisory boards. It's his application is there. Okay. <coughs> okay. What's the name? 
um, Paul Windler. And it oh, I got it here. Yeah, the, I passed it. Yes. There we go. Also, while you read um, some of those applications, I'd like to remind the board of the um, email that you received from the Board of Equalization. Um, it dates back to March 8th, where he, they, um, the board itself uh, presents uh, some options as to how they're going to transition with the pushed um, couple. Um, and also, you receive, following up uh, to that, one of uh, an email from one of the Board of Equalization members highlighting the, perhaps the conflict of interest if a husband and wife are part of that. That is the, um, um, a decision they, they, you may need to consider taking soon, mm -hmm. since it has been since uh, at least a couple of months since yeah, you've sure. received that. I think we're almost there. All right, you want feedback on this applicant? I do not have any more feedback from this particular applicant, okay. other than the application no, that she's... No, he's asking if you no, want no, but feedback I, yeah. from the commission. Do you, oh, need, I'm do sorry. you need feedback on this? Because I don't know the gentleman, uh, and I'm going to need to do a little more digging than, uh, than okay. give a... I don't want to opine on it, because I don't... I'm, I'm not know. rushing uh, okay. to make a decision on something that you haven't reviewed <coughs> as of yet. Is it district-specific? Agriculture is in my bag. Um, I don't remember. This particular person is in District 1, I got that. but I will need to double check. I don't believe so, but let me just double get check. back to you. Yeah. And Rob okay. Anita, he's interested in the Agritourism? Agritourism or Agriculture Committee? There's two different things. Yeah. Right. And I'm not sure what AOD. Let me do some research on this. I'm. Uh, Doing a follow up. That's what on I was wondering. List. I was going to ask about the line. AOD is Agricultural Overlay District. Overlay mm. District, thank you. I'll remember that very well. What is that? Is the Agricultural Committee? It's the, it's, no, it's the Agritourism. Tourism. Tourism. It's the uh, Agritourism. AOD, okay. Sandra told me. Yep. And that'd be nice information to have either mm -hmm. on the application or at least have up front then as to whether it is. I like having it on there what district they live in. But whether it's a this district is, specific or not, I will make sure to put helpful. that on. The next one up for review is the uh, Veterans Advisory Board. One vacancy, and it appears uh, in reading the applications that we have two that are qualified Lisa Narcisco. Narciso, and Charles Week. And there's only one vacancy. Only one vacancy. Do you know either of them? Did you see the, uh, you look at the review? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. I was going to look at them here next week. Mm -hmm. Let me just continue on down the line. <laughs> I'm ready if you are. Okay. The Board of Equalization, there's an attached email regarding Thaddeus May. And John Gra Graver, term expired March the 1st. And he is requiring to be, or requesting to be reappointed. We'll have to talk about that one in conjunction with the Poos decision. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Current um, other vacancies is the Agri Tourism Committee. We just talked about that one. I will. Uh, there's no. Oh, there's no special requirements, so it's not district specific. On the agritourism, we still have a vacancy for the Noxious Weed Control Board, yeah. and that is a specific for Weed District Four. 
Yeah, which I think is in my. Let me verify. Within that. my district. It That's is. When it's still it open. is weed district specific, not commissioner district. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> but I will find out if it is in your district or what commissioner district it is in. The I think fair it overlays or overlaps. Uh, the fair board? Two vacancies <coughs> and no special requirements. Solid Waste Advisory Committee. Commissioner or designee alternate. And I will be checking with staff on that. It's um, the, it, for an alternate, they, uh, I need to check. The one thing that's not on here is how many alternates we have and in what commissioners' districts are being represented at the time. So we have an even spread on representation. An alternate was for the it's, it's only one commissioner represented at the, at the uh, SWAC. And at this point, uh, the designee is Josh Cummings. Josh Cummings, okay. Yeah, La Bonita, the uh, alternate, alternate was for what district or for what board? That would be for solid waste advisory. Solid waste, okay. No, there's, uh, Commissioner, that's an assignment that you as a board. There is, there is no uh, a district specific. As, right, right. As you represent, yeah, as, as you represent, for instance, on the LOD board, mm -hmm. um, the commission, this is a representation of the commission. Got it. The Historic Commission has five, vacan five total vacancies, and they would <coughs> like someone with historic building knowledge, District 1 and a District 3, and they need three al alternates. Again, they need someone from Commissioner District 1 and 3, and three alternates. Yeah. Boy. That is a very active board. I have in a couple people in mind. Okay. And so they utilize all of the members. Even though they're alternates, they all participate. They're all yeah. part of that. How big a board is that? Do we have five openings? I'd have to double check. There's several members it's on that board. It's a fun board. I wish I could get on Yeah. But it's, um, it is a very large board, very active board. They have a, a lot of activities that they're doing. Let me check and give you a number of how many. I mean, people, is it, I'm going to sneeze in a moment, but is that because there's people leaving or resigning or expiring? Or <laughs> it just seems others. like a lot. It is, and um, I haven't been here, so I, have to, I don't have an answer as to why okay. we have five right now. All right, thank you. We've already discussed the Veterans Advisory Board having one vacancy. And the only other issue on my list today, of course, and I've already mentioned it, the Board of Equalization. And you are in the process of reviewing and making yeah. your decision. All righty. Let's try to wrap this up. In the next two, three minutes we have this. Do you have any commission items? No, I don't. I have just one. It's a very simple one. Uh, so for the movement of uh, the WSU extension uh, out to um, the Benishek building, I was hoping to draft a letter of appreciation to the volunteers that are part of the WSU um, with the board <coughs> members signing it, thanking them for their patience and having to go through the transition and sticking it out, so to speak, in the next 20, 30 days, something like that. And we can work different ways to Josh, you, any one of the assistants. Yeah. Just a short little uh, appreciate the, putting up with the turmoil. So you, you want um, to clarify a thank you letter to all the um, Washington State Extension staff as well as the volunteers? Yes. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Verbal, but I think it would do um, good to show where they have value in, in that whole transition. 
and the airline will be thanking them for their, obviously, their contributions, whereas for their patience during their move. Yeah, and their okay. input. Mm -hmm. Okay. To make it better. Is that right? Yes. That's the only thing I have. Annette, thank yep. you very much. We'll work on it. We are adjourned for the pre agenda. One o'clock, we're gathering out, we're thereabouts, one o'clock out at the uh, uh, FJC. FJC. Yeah. Oh, we are. And that's going to be a quick trip I since we need that. to come back here by two. Quick round robin. Okay. Ice cream? Yeah. Oh. I'm sorry, yes. Okay.